This is Jen Judkins with Teaching Forward. This tutorial video is part of our Chrome web browser series. In this video, we'll help you with tips on how to best manage users within the Chrome web browser. We'll show you how to add users and manage multiple users using the Chrome web browser and how to take advantage of incognito browsing. Let's get started. The Chrome web browser is unique in that it is customized for individual users. This is a benefit and can be a problem, however, if you use multiple Chrome accounts. There are recommended ways to manage multiple users in a Chrome window. So in this browser window, what many people often do would be to click on the icon that shows the user's account and use this Add Account function. The problem with this is that in one browser window, you're toggling back and forth between users and it can become confusing which user you're looking at at any given time. It also can cause disruption because there are some tools that don't allow you to use Google Apps in multiple accounts at the same time. For example, if I were logged into multiple accounts right now and I tried to use Google Classroom, it would not work for me. So the best practice for managing multiple users is to use the Add Individual Persons button, which is actually part of the settings. So let me show you how to do that. In the Chrome browser, um, menu right here. You're going to go to settings and you'll see that it shows who I'm signed in as. So this is the primary account that my browser window is using. And then if I scroll down I have people and I can add additional people as opposed to the add account that I just showed you in this other window. So this is different. So I'm going to show you how to add people. So I'm going to add a person I can choose an icon or upload a picture to represent a particular person. And so I'll add my other account here. And when I say add, it's going to prompt me to sign in with the other account that I want to add. And once I've done this, I'm going to sign in. It will prompt you with a question about whether or not you want to link data. You do want to link data because what this will do is allow any updates that you make. So for example, if I um, were to add any bookmarks or any Chrome extensions, those would follow me when I next log in. So what this does is it actually opens a second browser window. So you'll see I have this browser window here. Sorry, it's loading my Chrome extensions, which happens when you first log in. So it's loading my, bra it, it, in the top, I have this little tab that's appearing in the top uh, area of the browser here. And this is showing me which account I'm logged in in this window. And in this other window right above, you can see I'm logged into another account. So the way that this works is that if I close this, now that this person has been added to this Chrome account, okay, remember, under settings, and under people you'll see I have multiple accounts here all of these accounts are available from this tab if I hit this tab and I say switch person it will allow me to choose any one of these accounts so by choosing the account it will automatically log me in because I've done that login already and it will open that account right into a new window. Remember there's going to be separate windows. This keeps everything clean so that if I went to mail for example here it's going to log me into my mail for this account whereas if I logged into mail here then it's going to pull my mail for my school account. So that is a brief overview of the best way to add new users so that you can toggle between users. Now sometimes when you're in an account, uh, maybe at a different desktop than you normally use or a public computer, you really wouldn't want to do something like this. You wouldn't want to log into Chrome and have your account information there. So another alternative is to use the incognito browsing. And so you'll see incognito browsing is available here from that little uh, person tab, but it's also available right here from the Chrome menu and you'll see new incognito window. What happens with incognito is that 
any pages and browser history is not going to be stored. This includes cookies and other metadata that can follow you around uh, tracking and things like that when you're browsing. It's important to understand that this does not avoid any of your school's content filtering. This just um, is a way to uh, keep your history private. And the, the advantage to this is if I wanted to log into Google on someone's computer that I that is not my own, and if I were to sign in here, then I would not have to worry about that account information hanging around after I leave. So if I sign in here and whatever I do here is remember this is in a separate tab so see this incognito person right here and this is my browser tab so when, once I close this that information is gone um, so that's the safest way to browse when you're not on your computer and it avoids any linking of information to um, a desktop that you're not normally going to um, be, be logged in on a regular basis the other advantage of using incognito browsing is that if you, um, particularly in a Chromebook, I've noticed if I'm uh, having di difficulty with pages loading, sometimes I'm one, you know, I may be wondering if it has to do with my Chrome extensions in a way. And so if I want to rule out any, you know, um, cookies that might be interfering with a page or Chrome extensions, then browsing incognito eliminates any of those types of things that are part of the personalization of Chrome. So it's a great way to um, troubleshoot when you're having difficulty with pages loading because you can eliminate all those other factors. That concludes our training tutorial video on using the Chrome web browser with multiple users. For this and other tutorial videos, including more on Chrome web browsing, check us out online at teachingforward.net.